What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to do another Halo related, related video. Um, today we're going to do similar to what I did with the Halo CE with um, doing a level tier list, a campaign level tier list. Um, so basically we're going, going through all 13 levels of the Halo 2 campaign. I played the campaign on pretty much every difficulty, easy, normal, heroic, legendary, and legendary all skulls on the lasso. Obviously if you have not watched it, I did have a lasso series about a year ago. Um, and I had a highlight of all the funny moments and cool moments of Halo 2 Lasso in a more recent video called um, Halo 2 Lasso Solo Experience. Um, so if you want to check that out, you can. But this is just going to be an overall level tier list. I'm um, going through like the cutscenes, enemies, um, uh, level design, and all this, all this together to kind of like and just put them in the perspective of Lasso and just playing it normally. Um, and just kind of like going through them and giving my opinion on what I think the Halo 2 lasso or fuck, Halo 2 levels are. And just putting them on, reading them in the tier list, kind of like how I did with Halo CE. So we're going to go ahead and get into it, guys. I got the tier list ready to go right here. Kind of have them all in order from the first mission to the last. Put them all in F tier. Don't worry, they're not all trash. But in my opinion, Halo 2's levels are some of the worst in the series. I feel like they kind of did quantity over quality. With this one with the most longest campaign out of the original four and um the more linear levels but um starting off with um cairo station so about this level i mean this is obviously the intro to halo 2 um it has um a lot of sections where like specifically the hangar sections where you're just kind of holding out and fighting waves of enemies i really don't like sections like that i feel like it's kind of lazy game design to have you sit in one spot and just hold out i mean this shit ain't fucking firefight dog like i don't want to sit here and just in one area and fight off hordes of enemies like that's kind of annoying to me um there's not a lot of sections of that in this level there's only those two hangar sections that i can think of where just flying off hordes of enemies other than that but the level is um kind of linear it does have that cool section where you're out in space well, there's a couple of sections where you're out in space and there's little, those little gravity areas um, specifically where the, you're on top of the map gun and when you're fighting the fucking, um, those rangers uh, outside of that section, um, that little section there, I can't remember what it is, but you can see the fucking, um, the, an amber clad right there out too on the outside, but, um, the level is very linear, I feel like, I mean, there's, and obviously you're inside a space station, so you can't really be in big open areas, kind of like how Pillar of Autumn was with Halo 1 or Halo CE, whatever, um, not a lot of open areas. They can kind of get in, the, but they do try to put you in little open areas, but they're still kind of small. Um, so, like, yeah, a lot. Of, it's a common theme in Halo Two with the with the kind of linear level design, where Halo CE was more open, and I think Halo Three is more open as well. Halo CE is, or Halo Two is kind of going on a linear path on a lot of their levels. But on Lasso, this level is fucking annoying as shit. I hate this level on Lasso because. Specifically, you have to have Johnson with you the entire level because he's like a distraction. You get you soak up the enemy's bullets, and it's one of the hardest levels on Lasso. Like your first mission is just the hardest, one of the hardest in the Lasso playlist, uh, in my opinion. Plus, you're just it's just even if it's not hard, the hardest, it's still like it's it takes a lot of time because you gotta fucking get Johnson through the whole fucking level. And that last section is just. The worst of Halo 2 Lasso and Legendary, it's not bad, but on Halo uh, 2 Lasso, it's it's pretty freaking brutal. Um, but the intro cutscene is pretty cool too, with uh, the little um, Arbiter getting the mark of shame and you getting prom or you know getting some awards for your for your actions at the in the last game, and then you know the Covenant found Earth and shit, and they got a slip space rupture and all that trash. And then the outro cutscene is one of the best in the series with Return to Sender. Um, you're giving the Covenant back their bomb, essentially. They're blowing up the fucking damn Covenant supercarrier and landing on the enamor clad. But anyway, plugging this get this level into the um tier lists here, I'm gonna give it a solid C tier. The biggest downfalls of this level is basically how linear it is, but you can't really help that with it being on space station and all. But the little holdout sections you have, like we were fighting waves of enemies, and just how annoying it is on Lasso with having bring Sergeant Johnson with you the whole fucking time. Um, it's just really annoying. So I'm not the biggest fan of Cairo Station, but it is a pretty solid first level. Kind of like Pillow of Autumn, it's pretty solid. Next level is um, Outskirts. Um, outskirts, I do not like Outskirts at all. 
If you play it normally, you have this fucking annoying ass holdout section in the beginning where you have to um, fight um, waves, enemies, buggers, and there's coming in the alleyways and shit. That's just annoying. I do not like that. And then the Phantom comes and drops them in. That's annoying. And then you finally get through it, and you gotta fight the two hunters, uh, which you just mow them down with the machine gun usually. After that, you got... There's this fucking sniper jack out. Sniper jackal alley after that, man. Just like... And on Legendary, obviously, you get one-shotted by them. On Normal, not that bad, obviously, but no mission on this is gonna be that bad. Take into account Legendary, dude... This mission sucks on Legendary if you're playing it normally. Because you got to fight so many sniper jackals in that one section between where Johnson gets picked up by the Pelican and going to Hotel Hotel Zanzibar is just covered with freaking jackal snipers. But in Lasso, obviously, you don't have to worry about that because on Lasso, you're skipping pretty much the entire level. That entire section where you hold out all the way to Hotel Zanzibar, you skip it by just walking and running on rooftops, basically. A pretty common skip. There's... If I'm playing outskirts, I'm never sitting in that section, that beginning section, bro. Um, there's no point when you can just easily do a simple, you don't even have to do a grenade jump to get on top of the rooftops. And as long as you know where you're going, you can skip all the way to Hotel Zanzibar and skip all the sniper jackals and everything. But after that, you have, if you're playing normally, you'll go either get the Warhawk or the or a Ghost and go all the way through that section. I don't even know what the point of that section is. All you're doing is taking Warhawk, I don't even know why they spawn enemies. Um, all you're doing is driving right through it. So I don't really see the point of it. Um, until you get to the tunnel section, where in the tunnel section you uh, you basically have to stay like they have these annoying ass vehicles. They that are only in this level specifically, the ones with like the turrets on top, and they carry the ghost. That shit's annoying as fuck, especially on legendary because you get lit up by them and just die pretty easily. Um, so you gotta either hang back from them or destroy them with a ghost or a warhog gunner. So that's kind of annoying as fuck, but um. You get to the last section, and at the end, you get a you get no cutscene. It just kind of fades out, and that's the end of the level. On Lasso, you do like a grenade jump, and you go around to you get to skip the entire section where you're driving the Warhog through, and then you get um, to the tunnel section. You get the tunnel section, you hang back, and then eventually those things despawn, and then you get to you just fly through the end, and the same thing happens. Uh, the intro cutscene of the level is actually pretty cool with the uh, Pelicans. And then, you know, that whole scene with, like, you saying he fucked up the guy named Covenant Fleet, destroying the supercarrier and shit. And you get shot out of the sky by the scarab. And, like, you're like, holy shit, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, it's, uh, honestly, in my opinion, this level is one of the worst in the game. Um, not a lot of fun to be had in this level. Um, either you skip it entirely or you have to fight through a shit ton of sniper jackals and the motherfuckers are annoying as hell. And the, and the tunnel section is also annoying as fuck, too, so... Not to mention the buggers that are in that section too. That just fuck you up. So, plugging it into the the tier list, I'm giving it D. It's not quite an F, but it's pretty bad. It's not the worst. It's not the worst map or level ever in the fucking goddamn Halo. So I'm not gonna give it an F, but it's it's not great. Next up is Metropolis. So Metropolis starts off with a cool uh, interactive cutscene. I guess it's kind of interactive because based on the difficulty is what is the line that Sergeant Johnson gives you uh, when he talks about the tank. You can play this one or two ways. Either you can take the Warhog and go straight across the bridge and skip everything, every fight there is and just go straight into the tunnel section where you fight the fucking, um, all the elites and uh, all the covenant there. Or you can take the tank across and it takes fucking forever to take that tank across the goddamn bridge. And you're fighting like 20 damn ghosts in a wraith tank you gotta fight two more wraith tanks at the end, and then you finally get into the tunnel, and then you can take it. You can do take it over that little barricade or wall, whatever. Take it over and then fight more enemies in that section. But on the lasso way, you take the warhog across, which is super annoying, by the way. You take the warhog across, despawn the enemies, go back across, get the wraith tank, then go or the fucking scorpion tank, and then go back across the bridge again. That shit takes like twenty fucking minutes to do that, and then you finally get in that section, climb the wall. Fight the enemies, and then you're done with the right. You, you ditch the scorpion tank. Then you get in a little tunnel section, and you got like that tunnel section, and then you kill that sniper. You assassinate that sniper jackal, and there's like thirty fucking sniper jackals in that freaking section with the gauss hog going around in circles. Um, you know what I'm talking about, where the scarab kind of comes over on the side. And there's like thirty freaking sniper jackals. They just keep fucking spawning in that fucking corner. I know we. I know you know what I'm talking about if you play this mission. It's it's, it's fucking annoying. But in Lasso, you kind of skip it by doing like certain grenade jumps, grenade rocket jumps, and then you ride the Scarab. And then once you're done riding the Scarab, you drop down. And then you can skip that section entirely with the also with the right tank. 
um, section after the little circle with the Gauss Hog because you're supposed to use the Gauss Hog to kill the Wraith tank at the next section. And you ride through and you get into like the city streets. And that section, um, you have like what, like three Wraith tanks that you gotta fight and like two Sniper Jackals. Sniper Jackals aren't hard to deal with since they're so far away. And then the Wraith tanks, depending on how it goes, you mm, it can be harder or not. Usually, what I do is use mount the uh, kill the Marine or or whatever, or he's already dead. Take the Gauss Hog myself, then mount the Gauss Hog turret and shoot the, the shoot him that way. Or you can hijack him, which I find is a bit harder. But once you clear out the three Wraith tanks, basically that section ends. But if you're on lasso, you're supposed to just like sit there and wait until eventually they'll despawn on their own, and the Pelican will ride through. And then you go to the next section where then then you mount the um, the scarab tank, which the scarab part of the level is kind of underwhelming. Like it's not like in fucking Halo Three where you actually get to fight the thing. You just kind of sit there and fight waves, enemies on the top until they eventually stop despa- stop spawning, and then you go into the scarab tank where you kill the two ultras, and then that's the end of the level. Once you kill the scarab, the level ends, and that's pretty much that. Um, but the outro, the intro cutscene is kind of cool, and the outro cutscene is a uh, is kind of cool as well with you going into the slip space rupture. At the end, but um, plugging Metropolis into the tier list, I give it, I give it C tier, but higher than Cairo Station. Um, just the bridge section is kind of annoying in my opinion, and the scarab fight at the end is pretty underwhelming. But I think it's better than um, the best mission so far of the original, the first three. Next, we have um, the Arbiter. Now, the Arbiter is um, really cool because this is the first time you actually get to play as a fucking elite with elites and grunts but in my opinion the um enemies in this is kind of bland so you only have two types of elites you have the heretic elite miners and the heretic elite majors and um, the only difference really in between them is that they have different health pools and grunts are always the same always wielding needlers makes plasma pistols kind of scarce and then you have like what two different kinds of sentinels that you can fight and that's pretty much the only enemies in the game or in the level that you fight. Luckily, there's no real holdout sections in this level. Um, you're kind of going through it. It's very linear because you're in a, like a fucking mine, mining facility or some shit like that. But it does have that cool uh, banshee section at the very end of the level, which most people just skip anyway because you just fly straight to the end of the level. But you can kind of follow the wraith around and fight enemies, um, fight the anti-air um, grunts and stuff on the fucking little uh, shade turrets and with their fucking field rod guns. Which that section is probably the best section of the level. Um, but this thing is really cool that you get to play as an Arbiter. One of the few times you get to play as the Arb- Arbiter. Unless you play co-op on Halo 3. Which you play as an Arbiter on every level. If you play co-op uh, Halo 3. But in Halo 2. This is the only time where you only. Halo 2 is the only game where you only get to play as the Arbiter. Like just the Arbiter. Not Master Chief. Master Chief is not involved. But the level is bland. But it's not bad. It's kind of like Cairo Station. And the enemies are kind of. Kind of mid, but I think it's kind of cool. You get to play as the Arbiter. And the mission ends with you with the fucking Banshee section, so that's kind of cool. But there's really not much else to talk about with the level that I can think of. Um, the hangar section is kind of cool, I guess. There's not really much to it. You just clear out the enemies, open the hangar doors, and your enemies drop in. It's pretty much the end of that. And most of the, most of the levels is just going through corridors, so. Um... I kind of want to give a B tier, but I don't know if I can. I don't have a lot of positive things to say about this level, honestly. Because, yeah, it's really cool that you get to play as the Arbiter, but, like, the level's kind of bland, and you don't have a lot of enemy types to fight. I mean, it's just like I said, there's two different elites and one t- type of grunt, and that's it. That's all you fight. So, I don't know. I'll give it a top of C, I guess. Give it a top of C. I just have a metropol- metropolis. Um, next level is a game. It's a level that I hate significantly more than the Arbiter, the Oracle, man, it's just not good, bro, like, it, you get to fight the Flood, and you get more enemy types, because you get the Flood, so you get the Flood, um, the Flood Spores, the Flood Carriers, and the Flood, um, uh, Assault Forms, um, so that's three more enemy types that you get to fight, dude, the beginning section with the elevator is so annoying if you play that normally, like, it takes, it feels like it takes so fucking long, and then on, and Lasso, you skip it, you still gotta wait for it to come all the way down and you go to the next session to get a checkpoint and then you're waiting again for the door to open you play it normally you go in there and have to do a little holdout annoying ass holdout section oh my god it's so annoying dude it's just so much waiting and fucking holding out it's so i don't like that shit that's the worst part about this game 
this campaign is that they put you in so many situations where you're just sitting there and holding out and it's so fucking annoying i do not like it at all but yeah you have that lift section and then you have the waiting there and then you go into a kind of rotating area where you have to go on the other side of this little pillar thing and then but there's a way in lasso to despawn the enemy so you don't have to worry about the enemies so if you play it normally it's not that bad either you go through go through the section go in this open area you chase the fucking heretic but he goes in behind a shield wall but you go up to the cable and there's a way on the elevator if you do the elevator launch where you're just invincible for the whole level so once you get that the level's a joke like literally you cannot die unless you fall off the map no i think even that won't kill you i don't think the kill boxes can kill you when you have the, when you do that glitch which is kind of crazy because your hitbox is completely displaced but yeah you have that section where you get invincible so the level's a joke joke if you play it normally then obviously you don't get the invincibility you have to fight the elites which makes the boss fight significantly harder at the end but you have to cut the cables but the Cable cutting is kind of annoying because you have to wait for half jaw to finish his dialogue to cut the next cable. Fucking annoying. There's a lot of annoying things about this level, so I do not like this level at all. Anyway, once you cut the cables, he gets out of the section and he goes back to the hangar section. You have to fly a fucking banshee. You go back across where you came, then you get the banshee. Um, you get a banshee, fly across. You go in the hangar and you fight um, the hangar where you had the wraith came in in the last level, and then you fight the heretic leader. A boss fight in my opinion that's not very fun it's just basically you get him down to low shield i mean on easy you just kill him immediately but like on legendary and lasso you gotta fight him like and then he has to do a dialogue you wait for the dialogue to end and you fight him again until he's no shield and you have to do it like four times i think until he eventually dies and you have the invincibility so it's a joke it's just time consuming plus the fucking plasma rifle particles push you away with the with the um with sputnik so like that's kind of annoying but you still wait for him to finish his annoying ass dialogues and you can eventually kill him. And that's the end of that level. Um, with you finding, obviously, 343 Guilty Spark and then Tartarus takes him. That scenes in this, in this level aren't great. The level design is not is definitely not great. And the boss fight is just annoying at the end. Plugging this into the tier list. It's bottom of D. I wouldn't give it quite an F, honestly, because, I don't know, it might be an F, honestly. This level sucks. There's not a lot to like about this matter. I mean, being a, it's the first boss fight of the Halo series, that's kind of cool. That's why I'm going to put in D tier for that, because the boss fight is cool as fuck. Or not, not cool as fuck, but like it's, it's cool that there's a boss fight in a Halo game. I don't know. Whatever. It's going into D tier. All right, next level is a significantly better one. Uh, definitely a step up from the last one, Delta Halo. Now, in my opinion, Delta Halo is probably the most fun mission in this campaign, because you can just glitch out of the fucking map and just go anywhere in the fucking map. You go all the way to the sections of regret, um, and, and there in Delta Halo by just getting just a simple like jump. Don't know, it's not even a grenade jump; it's just a jump. But this starts out with a badass cutscene. Uh, you kind of come out of space with a fucking coming a super carrier. And you drop fucking drop pods with the ODSTs. You drop with them, and then you, you drop in the last cutscene. You get a fucking rocket launcher to start. We have two options: either you can stay there and hold out with the fucking Marines and shit, as the Pelican comes and drops a Warhog, or you can. Um, just skip the part entirely. You can skip pretty much the entire fucking level. Um, that's what you have to do with Lasso. Just skip the entire fucking level. And then you get, um, until you get to the end where you have to fight like some, some, uh, honor guard elites and a couple sniper jackals. That's pretty much it. So on Lasso, it's a really easy mission on normal or legendary. It's, it's okay if you play it normally. Um, but like I said, the, the intro, the intro like holdout section is kind of like, it's completely optional. Like, you don't even have to do it, but you do get rewarded if you do do it with a Warhog, which is kind of pointless because you get a fucking tank in the next section anyway that you'll take across the level, um, unless you take a ghost and try to speed that process up. But even the tank section is not as bad as it is in Metropolis. By any means, one of the few missions that you actually get to have a tank, so kind of cool. But um, you get a tank, and then you go across the bridge um, after you activate it, which is a kind of cool. You go across the bridge, and you go across the section until you get to that section where... You go into into the um, structure that's right there, um, but it's kind of cool because once you clear out the enemies, you get um, a bunch of drops, um, like sniper rifle, BR, all that trick, all that good stuff. After you get those, you get the web whatever weapons you want, and you go into the, the little fucking structure and you fight more enemies until you get to like the sniper jackal section with the cool ass soundtrack. Um, it's like some 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 nothing but jackal. The sniper jackals can be annoying, but they're not nearly as bad in this section of the level as they are in previous sections of other levels, like 
for example, fucking outskirts um, is the biggest crime crime of that section. And the next size, next level regret has some pretty annoying sniper jackal sections, but in this one they're not nearly as bad because you can snipe them from distance and they won't even see you. And plus you have a sniper rifle of your own, like I said. So unless you didn't grab it, I guess you don't. But um, you can get the beam rifle that the uh, jackal that you just assassinated in that section's beam rifle, so it's not nearly as bad. The most annoying part about this section is the buggers or the drones. That fucking fuck you up if you're on legendary or lasso, but or, or on lasso you skip the entire part. Like I said, you're skipping pretty much the entirety of the level on lasso, but on legendary those buggers or drones do fuck you up pretty quickly. Um, and then after that, you go to the last section of the level where you go into that another structure where the fucking prophet of regrets going, Ooh, uh, yeah. and then you fucking go in there and you fight honor guards. Um, overall, this level is. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty good. It's probably my favorite level because you just how much stuff, stuff you can do with it. Like you can glitch out of the map, run around. I've, I spent hours, dude, just hours running outside of the map of Delta Halo. And on Lasso, it's a pretty smooth sailing uh, level because you skip the entirety of it. And on Delta, and on, on normal, you have so many options. You can do a tank. You can take the tank across the level. You can, you have all these options of weapons. You have that cool sniper section. Like, there's just a lot to like about this level. So, for that reason, I'm giving uh, Delta Halo the A tier. Um, best level so far, in my opinion. So, anyway, Regret. Don't really like this level as nearly as much. And I have some reasons why. So, beginning of the section level, you have the most annoying enemy in the game. Fucking drones. Like, fucking annoying shit. On Legendary, they shred your health. On Lasso, they shred your health even faster. And then you have to, but unless you get right out of there, do a fucking couple back smacks on some elites to get full overshield, and you gotta clear out like 20 fucking jackal snipers in different, like, meticulous locations that are always random. Always random locations. Annoying as fuck, because jackal snipers are already annoying as fuck, but at least if you know where they are, they're pretty easy to handle, but you got an idea where they are on this part. And then you gotta do a damn annoying ass grenade jump to jump across so you can get on the gondola sections, and oh my god, the gondola sections. There's like four different type of types of gun or four different gun sections. There's two that are like above the water and two that you go underwater. They're just wasting my fucking time, dude. I hate sections of levels that you're just sitting there fucking waiting, bro. Like goddamn. Four times? Four fucking times? And they're all fucking long as shit. It feels like. But anyway, you, normally you clear out the section and then you get the fucking the gun that goes when you before he gets there and then you gotta fight some hunters and to send the fucking gondola back and you ride the gondola across the water where you they stop in the middle of it, you gotta fight some fucking covenant on the other gondola and then you can go all the way back to the next section. And lastly, you kinda skip that entirely by skipping all the hunters and stuff and the phantoms, despawning the phantoms, and then you just go straight across the fucking water, not having to worry about the enemies on the other gondola. And you do like you go around, jump on top of where the fucking um, fuel rod gun is, so there's more more drones don't spawn. Yes, there are fucking more drones in this fucking level. My least favorite enemy in the game. And you find them in this section, and then you go into another gondola section where you go under the fucking water. You just went through a gondola section, now you're going through another one where you go underneath the fucking water. This is probably the coolest part of the level when you get in those little big open areas underwater. Right, and you get to see the underwater fucking wildlife and shit. I mean, it's pretty cool. The big ass windows and shit. And the big ass pictures of regret. And lasso is fucking annoying as fuck because the big ass se sections have sniper jackals and, and hidden in it. And then you have to fucking fight the two goddamn, or you don't have to fight them, but you have to try and skip the two hunters that fucking chase you to no end. And then invisible camouflaged. Um, well, everything's camouflaged, but in lasso, but in legendary, you have those camouflaged enemies. Towards the end of the level, and then you go to another gondola section where you go under the fucking water again, come out in the top, and you have to fight like two honor guards and a few grunts until you go into an outside area where there's even more fucking drones, dude. There's drones all over this fucking level. Um, but luckily, that's the last time you'll have to fight them until you, you kill them all there, and then <clears throat> you move on to the last gondola section. So basically, you clear out the whole island, and fucking Pelican drops you some supplies. That you can use for the last time, I think, in the entire campaign that they drop you like those little pods. You, but in last, so you just kind of skip that other that section on the side by going straight to the gondola. You go in the gondola and you hit glitch um, with a box so the enemies cannot see you or fire upon you. So eventually the rangers despawn and then you move across the gondola to the last section of the level. Um, but in the normal playthrough, you kind of have, have to fight a couple of banshees and some rangers, but you're pretty well equipped thanks to the 
shit that the pelican dropped, so you're pretty good on that note. No. You go across into the final section where you get to fight enemies. It's pretty easy on legendary, but on last side, shit was so hard because you got to do a grenade rocket jump on to get to on the side window, and then you have to do this whole elaborate setup to prepare for the fucking another annoying ass boss boss fight, bro. Fucking regret, dude. So in Lasso, I think Legendary too, maybe. I can't. No, no, Legendary wasn't that like that. But on Lasso, you have to throw a grenade at the same time you board him to do any damage to him. If you just board him normally, he will not take like enough damage to do anything to him. But the problem is, like when you throw a grenade and you don't do it at the right time, and you'll stick yourself and either kill yourself or do enough not only damage yourself but not do any damage to the profit or regret. So it takes, I think it's like five boards, which ain't bad. You have to do five successful boards to kill him, but dude, is it fucking annoying. And you have to do this whole elaborate setup that takes like fucking 40 minutes by setting barricades and stuff on the door so the elites don't spawn. Because there's like unlimited honor guard elites. I think it always spawns a dual do wielding plasma rifle elite and a sword elite every time and like three grunts. So you have to deal with those constantly if you don't barricade the door wall or the, um, the doors they come out of. Now, Legendary, you don't really do that if you're playing normally, so you're going to have to deal with them, and the fucking dual-wielding elites fuck you up, like, instantly. So, yeah, I don't I don't like Regret's boss fight, just like I don't like the, any of the boss fights in this game. Spoiler, I don't like Tartarus' fight, boss fight either. I do not like Regret, guys. Like, just the entire level is kind of annoying. It has a good, like, atmosphere to it, I guess, because it's on Delta Halo, but other than that, it's not good. Um, But anyway, plugging this into the fucking um, tier list here, we're going to put... Regret, I don't think it's as bad as the two levels of the D tier right now, only because the atmosphere is kind of nice, and the ending cutscene is really cool too, and I think killing the Prophet of Regret is pretty fucking awesome. I'm going to put it on the bottom C, it's just barely out of D tier in my opinion. But next level, Sacred Icon is another mission you play as um, the Arbiter, but you're only fighting Sentinels in the Flood, so you have less enemy times than you did in um, the Oracle, but I think this is a pretty... A lot better mission because there's not a lot of those sitting and waiting sections of the level i think the only kind of one they kind of have is the one well one at the end of the level and the one after the gondola section that isn't very long that's why it's not that bad it's a pretty cool one to get to see like there's a lot of things to see like in, for example in, in regrets for the gondola sections you don't see shit it's fucking water and islands but in this one you can see like it's the ring and like all the shit inside of the fucking library around the library area you go in, you got this oppressor, once you, or the sentinel oppressor, whatever the fuck it's called. The one the motherfucker that picks you up. Um, I'm just going to call it oppressor because I can't think of the name of it. But you, as soon as you kill it, though, it's like doors open so you can go in the exception. Or you can just sit there and kind of hold out and kill all the flood and sentinels uh, one at a time. But either way, the door opens eventually. And when you go through the doors, you go to the next section with this big open section that you can fight in. There's like rocket launcher that you can use to kill the oppressor with. And there's some flood there as well. And then you get to a... I think there's a tunnel section there, like where you jump down the chute. I can't remember. And then you go into like these, um, like kind of bridge sections. That's kind of annoying because there's a lot of flood spawns in there and you cannot see shit because it's so foggy. You go down to another chute and then you go into the section where the Marines are, which you just skip across it on lasso or you fight across it with a legendary, which is annoying because shotgun flood exists. And if the shotgun flood gets you, you're just dead. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of annoying. Then you get to another shoot section to where you get to the next shoot sections. With the shoot sections, shoot sections, it's a tongue twister, aren't bad. I think they're kind of cool. I'll be like, fucking, like a little slip and slide, you know what I mean? But then you get to the last section, which in my opinion is the worst section because it's another holdout section. So you gotta fucking, you get to the end where like there's like snow and shit going on. And then you get to where half jaw is, and half jaw is, and then you just gotta hold out. And last, so you just kind of sit there and wait for half jaw to kill all the enemies, and then the phantom spawns in. If you play it normal, there's like four or five waves that you gotta clear through, and then the phantom comes in, and then once the phantom comes in, the level ends. But yeah, Sacred Icon's a solid level, but I feel like, in my opinion, it's a very forgettable one. I mean, there's not a lot of bad things to say about it. I don't think there's anything bad about this level, kind of like how the Arbiter is. Well, the Arbiter's. Um, the Arbiter didn't have any bad parts. I kind of, I'm kind of I'm kind of debating whether or not to put a B or C, honestly, because there's not a lot of bad things to say. But there's there's not a lot of enemy types. It's like I said, you're only fighting the Flood. But it's still cool that you get to play as the Arbiter. But it's definitely better than Sacred Icon because there's like no holdout sections except for the end. So I, I really can't give it higher than Arbiter. Honestly, I feel like giving the Arbiter a B and giving Sacred Icon a C, honestly, because I feel like Arbiter has more shit going on. 
All right, next level is Quarantine Zone. Now, Quarantine Zone is a kind of a cool level. It's kind of like how Metropolis was in the beginning, where it's just like mainly a vehicle level. Um, basically, you get the, uh, I think you started with either getting a Sereth or a Ghost. I usually rock the Ghost. I think a Ghost is a very vehicle. When you're riding through the level, you can either fight the fucking vehicles in the flood or you skip right past them. Usually, I skip right past them, but if you want to play them normally, you can. You can like hijack a Wraith tank or something or a Scorpion tank and play that throughout the level. But basically, on last hell, you're just speeding through. Um, normally, when I play, I speed right through as well. And you get to a section where you stop, but like it's kind of cool to see like the destruction and the flames. The level, the level looks really cool in my opinion. Um, but it's a very quick one. Um, if you're just flying through, like I said, you get to a section where you stop, fight through some flood, fight through an oppressor and and stuff, and then you get to the next section where you can pick up another ghost with the wraith there too. So if you want to hijack the wraith, you can a little bit of high risk, high reward. They get to the next section where there's like two more wraith tanks, and I think a scorpion tank in the next section. They had to go through in like a Gauss Warhog piloted by like two flood. One's on the turret, one's driving. But like I said, it's a very forgettable mission because it's a very like fast. And then when, pretty much once you get to the gondola section, it's pretty much over. But if you want to fight in the gondola section, it's pretty long and annoying. But usually you just kind of sit on the top. You clip in the top section of the elevator or gondola and then... You just kind of sit up there and the enemies don't know you're there because you're pretty much invisible. But you can still shoot them if you want to get like some score or just kill Flood. But if you want to hold out, it's kind of annoying. It's kind of like similar to the um, elevator section in the Oracle, in my opinion. Like it's kind of like the same deal, but it's not as annoying as the Oracle. So in my opinion, there's not a lot to say about um, Quarantine Zone, man. It's just like it's a very quick level and the gondola section is kind of annoying. Kind of like similar how um, the Oracle has this elevator section, but... It's not as bad as the Oracle. I'd say it's just in between Cairo Station and Metropolis. Um, I think Metropolis did the vehicles. Vehicle sections is better in Metropolis. A lot less annoying, a lot less tedious, and you don't have an annoying gondola section at the end where you can either just sit there and wait or fight through it. But it, either way, once you're on the gondola section, it takes you right to the end of the level, and then the level ends with you getting betrayed by Tartarus, and then it goes into you falling into a pit and getting captured by the Grave Mind, which alludes to our next level great mind man my biggest complaint about this level this level is actually pretty freaking good except for the beginning section of the level a legendary lasso you're stuck with a 50 50 chance of you just immediately getting gunned down by two brutes with blue plasma rifles which shoot faster than the uh, normal plasma rifles do um and if you amp that with the uh, come on with the lasso they shoot even faster um, so that's annoying, but on Lasso, which is a 50 50 chance. Lasso and Legendary, it's a 50% chance you just die immediately. But on Lasso, you're hiding you're hiding a lot of time. Just this, annoying, this, this section, like, fucking, I fucking hated um, the beginning section of Grave Mind on Lasso. And on Legendary, it's not much better. Um, but once you battle through that, the lesser of the level is pretty nice until you get to the prison. But, it, but if you play the prison normally, it's not that bad. Like I said, the biggest problem with this level is the beginning of it. Um, you just cannot stand the beginning level of Grave beginning part of grave mine um but basically if you're doing lasso it's kind of like you're kind of picking off enemies until you get to the lift section of a uh, prison and then you have to do a prison skip where you have to get the brute in a certain um position throw a grenade he jumps in with you and you do a sword can or a melee cancel all the way up and you skip the entirety of the prison if you play the prison normally say on a legendary run it's not too bad but it can be kind of annoying and then you get to the end of the prison where the enemies are coming down the list, you easily kill them as they're going down, and you go up, and you get to the next section, where I think the next section is where you go in the elites, and brutes are fighting each other, and the buggers fly over. It's pretty cool being able to watch the brutes and the elites fight each other after they got betrayed and stuff by the prophets. Kind of helps you, it helps distract the enemies so they're not completely focused on you the whole time. And there's also these really cool open sections where you get to go, not only like the lift sections where you get to see the entirety of high charity, which I think is awesome. I think. The level, to, like the visuals of Grave Mine are definitely the best in, honestly, the some of the best in, the, honestly, the series of the entire game. Like, definitely the best in the game. Seeing High Charity as in its entirety on the, some of those lifts, those little floating lift sections are really cool. And those sections are some of the best in the mission as well. And also the big, like, planetarium areas where, like, there's all kinds of plants and stuff. And you see, like, the enemies fighting each other. The only annoying part about those sections specifically is the Sniper Jackals, obviously. Sniper Jackals in this game are the most annoying enemy. I think we can all agree are the most annoying game, game, 
enemies in the game franchise. In this one, there are no exception. They're still there and they can be annoying, but they're not as prominent as in Outskirts or even Metropolis. So that's not bad. But then once you get to those two planetarium sections, you go pretty much a straight shot to the end where you get to the mausoleum or the Arbiter and you need the banging ass soundtrack um, plays and you get to see this big fight unfold between the brutes and the elites and hunters. They're all fighting each other because the hunters are on the sides of the elites. You got elite um, council members, honor guards, ultras, all of them fighting against brutes. And then you can just watch that unfold or join in the fight and fight with uh, fight them yourself and clear that area out. Usually when you play on lasso, you just kind of skip that entire part entirely and head straight for the doors after waiting for a while for a music cue, for a sound cue. Then you run straight to the end of the level with uh, the next prophet, getting the prophet of mercy, getting absolutely hornswoggled by a flood spore. Kind of crazy into him. But anyway, um, plugging this into the tier list, I don't know. There's a lot of like about Grave Mine, but the beginning section is so bad. I kind of want to put it in the bottom of B. But the lasso, ex the lasso experience the level is so bad. If I was doing lasso, it'd be F easily. I don't know. I kind of want to put it on B, just below the Arbiter. Because there's the, the level design, is, or not the level design itself, but like the visuals of this level is so amazing. And being able to see the Covenant fight the Brutes is really cool to watch and see. And the big fight at the end in the Mausoleum of the Arbiter is just absolutely like cool. But the beginning section holds it back from being A because it's just so fucking annoying on Legendary. On Normal, it's easy, but like obviously, but on Legendary and Lasso, dude, that beginning section is just is so frustrating. Um, so... Yeah, we're going to put that into B. On the bottom of B, just below the Arbiter. Our next level we got is Uprising, which is kind of a forgettable one in my opinion, but it still has its, its moments. So you start out spawning in after the fucking Grave Mine somehow teleported you with his mind. And you spawn in with a cool soundtrack, by the way. But you fight through some brutes, you spawn with the plasma rifle, the fucking um, sword, which not having a carbine is really annoying in this section because the brutes are very... Um, vulnerable to precision shots um because they don't have shields so you shoot them and hit them up some a lot of times and they'll eventually die but you fight through a section through with brutes you eventually get a carbine and you get to use that and you get to the next section where you see an elite on legend on last cell you kind of do some grenade skips but it's really annoying because the brutes just kind of know where you are at all the time they have like a sixth sense and they have perfect throw like a fucking mlb pitcher with their fucking goddamn plasma grenades and they throw shit right at your fucking feet when you're trying to skip the level so that's very annoying. But once you get that section, you get inside the facility, and then you're kind of going through, throwing out enemies, enemies in rooms and rooms. You have to fight through jackals and brutes. I think that's the only enemy types you fight in this one. If I'm not mistaken, it's just brutes and jackals. Everyone else is on your side. I think grunts are as well. But you're going through the level. It's very forgettable sections. It's just kind of going through rooms and rooms, using your active camouflage and lasso to skip a lot of the sections where you had to fight brutes. And just sneaking past them. So eventually when you get done with the room clear, clearing, you go to the outside after going through. And then you can, you, get on a, uh, you clear out that section a little bit. And then you get ghost and you ride the ghost through the through the rest of the level. Which is pretty cool, I think. It's kind of like the, uh, it's almost, almost like, a, like a Warhog run, but with a ghost in your Arbiter. Um, but on Lasso, that's pretty much the end of the level once you get on the outside. Because you can do a skip that brings you to the end level. But if you play it normally... You run through it, and then you get to a where a sniper jackal is, and then you um you assassinate that motherfucker, and then you go to you go through this area with a fucking wraith, and the wraith is super annoying on legendary because you get a fuel rod gun, but fuel rod gun is not nearly as effective as a rocket launcher is. So the, basically, your best bet is to board it while getting shot at by not only sniper jackals but brutes with carbines, which is can be annoying. But anyway, you, you, you clear out the area and then you get to the end with like the. There's a little cool armory section as well where the, where my skulls are. But um, clear out the wraith and I think once you get to a certain spot, the, I can't remember exactly because it's been a while since I played that mission normally. And the mission ends and that is it. So plugging uh, uprising into the tier list, I don't think it's really good enough to put it up to B tier because it's a very forgettable level, in my opinion. I do think it's better than a sacred icon though. It's definitely not bad. I feel like the bench or the um, ghost section is pretty freaking cool. Um, but once you get to the wraith section, it kind of slows down again. And that beginning sections are kind of like monotonous as fuck, in my opinion. Just you were really just room clearing and um, doing that trash. So I'm going to put it above on the top of C tier above Sacred Icon. I think I enjoy it more than Sacred Icon. 
All right, so now we got the Pan Ultimate Mission of the Campaign. We got High Charity. Now, High Charity is... It's okay. I mean, it's the same thing as Grave Mine, but instead of fighting just the Covenant, or Brutes... Um, well, I guess the entire Covenant, yeah. You're fighting Brutes, and I don't think there's any Elites anymore in this level. I think it's just Brutes, Jackals, and some, some Grunts are in this level, and Blood. Like I said... I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I really do not like the Flood in Halo 2. That's, they're kind of not nearly as fun to fight as Halo 1 or 3. They are pretty prevalent in this level, but this level is pretty freaking short, so you don't have to deal with them for too long. There's a way to skip the entire level in the beginning, but High Charity Skip is pretty uh, hard to do, so I did not do that in my lasso run. But in lasso, this mission is not bad. You're kind of going through a section in the little Flood uh, spores on the side of the walls. You can melee them. They actually have health. When you melee them, you get overshield. So that's pretty nice. You get your shield and stuff back pretty easily in this level. But there is that big open section, which is kind of cool visually, but playing through it um normally or just on lasso is just like a pain in the ass. A big open area where you go on the list, the lifts, and you go around like a circle, pretty much. Not really a big fan of that section, but there's big open sections where they're kind of like the window and you can see like the tentacles of the grave mine and stuff as he's taking over high charity. Is pretty is pretty dope. Those little big areas, but fighting the flood as a master chief is not my favorite. And I'll tie that in with the brutes, which is another pretty annoying enemy. I don't think at any part in Arbiter's playthrough that you fight both the flood and the brutes. So having to fight both the most annoying enemies in the game here is not very fun, in my opinion. You truck through, you go through this like slow ass lift, bro, like slow as fuck. You get to one of the final sections where you have to clear out the enemies until eventually the door fucking opens. Once you clear all the enemies out, and then you go through there, and you get to the final section of the level, which you can either clear out all the enemies and run to the end, or you can just run straight to the end pretty easily. Um, like you would do in the last run, where you fucking just go straight to the um, Forerunner ship, like a fucking jet, straight through that bitch, and zoom through, and then the level ends. High Charity, it's not nearly as good as Great Mind, so I'm not going to put it in B tier, but you're finding two really annoying enemies. I'm going to put it between... Quarantine Zone and Metropolis. I do think Metropolis is a bit more fun, but fighting both the Brutes and the Flood is super annoying, and the level honestly isn't crazy visually. Um, not nearly as good as Great Mind was, but still has a little bit of charm, but just not a lot to say about this level. It's pretty you know, right there in the middle, pretty, pretty forgettable. Now the final app level, the fucking ultimate final level of the campaign, The Great Journey. The Great Journey begins with you either being able to choose a Wraith or a Seraph to go through the level. You can use a tank to bully through the enemies, or you can use a Seraph to kind of zoom past them. Usually I just use the Seraph. You get a section where you have to, section in front of the door where you have to clear out all the enemies before you enter the building. So you have to clear out the Wraith tank and a few Brutes, which isn't terrible, but can be annoying without another Wraith tank. So if you want to do a Seraph, you'll probably have to hijack the Wraith tank. I can't remember if there's one or two. I think there's one. Then you go inside the building and if you play it normally, you, you'll go through and clear out some enemies. Basically clear each section out until you get to the final platform. But there are some pretty cool sections in there. For example, like that big open area um, where but there's shit ton of brutes spawn there. And then you go to a bridge where there's some jackals and, and buggers and like I said, another annoying enemy in the game, the fucking drones. But you're basically clearing out, section out sections out kind of like how Uprising was in the beginning. But you have this cool little prison area that you can go to and basically free out some enemies. If you play Lasso, you just skip it. But if you play it, normally you can free out some hunters, um, council member, elite council members, and some elite ultras and stuff. And they can fly by your side in the next section. I think actually, no, you free the the um, hunters because they soak up some damage for you in the next section um, on Lasso. But obviously on normal playthrough, you can clear out all the enemies and... That's basically, and you'll have some allies there. The next section, you're clearing out some, I think there's like a shade turret there, and you clear out some more brutes and enemies. You get to that big open area I was talking about earlier. Jump across on lasso, or you can just fight through it normally on a normal run. And then you get to that little bridge section with the phantom fighting over you. This is on, la on lasso, this is where you kind of like stop because you don't want to go on the platform quite yet. You go all the way back, and then you jump on the platform, skipping all the uh, brutes and stuff entirely. Then, um, but if you go through it normally, you go to the platform, the Sergeant Johnson breaks free from the grasp of the fucking um, brute, and then you just assassinate the motherfuckers and kill them all, and then Johnson gives you a whole spill about 
how you also join sides and he'll control the scarab. Then you get into the Banshee, you fly all the way across, or you can use a Seraph to do the Johnson duplication glitch, which you'll do on Lasso. If you play it normally, you'll just guide the Seraph or the Scarab with Johnson in it through it. You have to clear out the freaking race in the beginning or you will not progress. I've done that a few times where he's just sitting there waiting for Johnson. He just doesn't come. Now you gotta clear out this fucking race because he can't kill himself. But anyway, if you play it normally, you just fly through, get to the end where you wait for him to break down the door and you go in the door and you fight some enemies there in the beginning section. So you eventually clear them all out. It's a cool, cool section that you can go underground into, which is kind of cool. But you clear all the enemies and you go through those doors. Like it's mostly like uh, brute craftings and stuff. I don't think there's any jackals in this level or in this section of the level anymore. Then you go into the final boss fight against Tartarus. But if you use the Johnson duplication glyphs, you, you completely skip the uh, breaking down the... I he breaks down the door and like that little section in it. You just go straight into the final boss fight section and then you use the Seraph to duplicate Johnsons. That way having up to like four or five Johnsons in the fucking... Um, I guess four Johnson, so you Tars is constantly getting hit by uh, beam rifles. Then you gotta clear out brutes for him to take damage. So it, brute waves come, and you gotta clear out the brutes. I think it's like three waves, and once you clear out three waves, Tardis will have taken enough damage for you to finish him off. Um, but then that's the ending. You defeat, defeat Tars, which I think is probably the best boss fight in the game. Though it can be annoying when Johnson can't hit his shots, but like I said, with the, with the Johnson duplication glitch, you don't have to worry about that. Finally, plugging in the last mission into the fucking tier list here. I'm going to put um, The Great Journey. Honestly, there's a, lot, there's a lot I like about this level, and it's not too bad. I'll put it in between Gravemind and The Arbiter, I think. No, I'll actually, I'll put it on top of B. I think it's better than The Arbiter. Last mission of the campaign, cool in, uh, exit cutscene. Not a lot to hate about this level, except for having to get fucking wait for Johnson and the Scarab. The Johnson duplication glitch isn't even that hard to perform, and we get to skip a lot of the level as well on lasso so lasso isn't bad and the boss fight is probably is, is the best in the uh, campaign anyway this is my complete halo 2 campaign level tier list hope you guys enjoyed it um let me know what y'all think in the comments do you think this is pretty accurate or do y'all think that i'm pretty talking out my ass in my opinion i played this campaign multiple times on multiple different difficulties finishing off with lasso kind of recently so I think my opinion is kind of warranted but we'll see what y'all think in the comments to be honest this is probably the worst campaign levels in the series like the release of the original four they help hell four might be worse i don't know it's been a while since i played Halo four honestly we'll see when i finish Halo four lasso eventually anyway it's not as good as Halo uh th ce's levels kind of feel like, feel like they're more quality over quantity but they do have a lot of repeats where this one does not have any repeats except for kind of like high charity is a lot similar to Great mind and such. There's a lot more missions and a lot less special missions. Like I said, there's like no S tier, but there's no F tier either. I think the closest to F tier would like be the Oracle because there's a lot of weight in sections and that can, that can be annoying. But anyway, this is going to be the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what y'all think about this tier list in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.